Do you think 5 hours of maintenance on a Saturday morning is a good idea when you're running an MMORPG? Well, Amazon or whoever is running the Tron and Liberty servers thinks that's a great idea for sure. At least I could write a script for this video review and that time. So buckle up and let's do this. If you haven't guessed it by now, in today's video we're gonna talk a bit about Tron and Liberty, the newest NCSoft MMO. Now what should you expect from this video? I played it for about 56 hours. I'll give you pros and cons on the game and its systems. Minus the PvP and guild aspects because I'm not interested in an army like hardcore experience. I don't have the time and patience for that anymore. But I'll briefly touch upon those aspects anyway because I have opinions on everything of course. The So yeah, I'll give you a list of things I like then a list of things I dislike about this game. And I'll start with strengths. Graphics are pretty damn nice, it's safe to say it's the best looking MMO to date and it runs surprisingly well. I didn't have any FPS issues since early access for some reason, no idea if they patched something in but yeah, the performance is a bit better. It's surprising to see how many characters and NPCs can render to be frank. Other than that it's just a generic medieval fantasy but looks damn good and runs pretty well. So. Yeah, the combat is okay for a tab targeting game. I know it has an action combat system also, but I dare you to use it. Okay, do it, then come back here and tell me it's better than the alternative. Decent amount of content for a new MMO, giving players a lot of options to advance their characters, if they join a guild. Pretty cool boss fights, not gonna lie, I enjoy the difficulty, it sure gives you the satisfaction when you finally drop a boss for the first time. Now, if you are well, rejoice, you can gear up with your credit card. <laughs> Which is pretty cool, I guess. Who tells you this has no pay to win elements straight up lies? I respect the fact that this game doesn't try to be for everyone because that's a good way to fail at everything, you know? If you're in a guild, you can participate in weekly raids or do daily contracts for good loot and guild coins. The more active your guild is, its rank increases and that has a lot of benefits. I saw a similar guild system in Black Desert Online. It's pretty cool if you ask me. You can also transform in a lot of creatures and have pets that look loot for you, heal you and do other tasks. Now about the negatives and yeah there's there's a lot to cover here. <laughs> the skill and gear progression system is nice at first but after a while you realize you can't easily switch builds. There are things that help you do that for, of course but you can't try another weapon combo on a fly who's telling you otherwise is a bit disingenuous. Just a bit. You see all those flashy moves, explosions and stuff, but most of that is just single target damage. It looks dumb and it feels like shit when you play the game and have two or three mobs on you, but you need to kill them one by one because your class doesn't have a semi-decent AOE, if any. In World of Warcraft, for example, I remember all classes had some AOE capacity, you know. The grappling hook mechanic that looked great in trailers, <laughs> it's pretty basic and bad. Uh, I got two issues with its current implementation, two major issues. The first one is you need an extra click to change direction when you use it. So this applies to shape shifting too. And to enter that state facing a certain direction, you will not rotate your character seamlessly until you click. So if that's done intentionally, dude, <laughs> do you even play your own game, really? And the second one, it, it's only a predefined spots and there aren't many to begin with. It's bad. I wasn't expecting to move to the world like Spider-Man. But come on bro, come on. This is boring and combined with the first one I described, it makes for a badly implemented feature that had so much potential. So this might look like a minor thing to you, but in dungeons for example, you often have to grapple or shapeshift out of big AOEs. And being this clunky facing the character's initial direction is infuriating. I quick fix this ASAP. Cooking is bad in a way I didn't see an... <laughs> MMO mechanic in my life. I, I couldn't get ingredients for a single freaking meal in 50 hours. Way to go devs. It looks like this profession was an afterthought. Salt for example should drop from every ore you mine near the coastline for example. Just an idea so people don't say I'm hating without offering solutions you know. While having consequences to your actions is nice, in this game you are punished for the wrong reasons really and you can so easily waste enchanting materials. 
so easy to do that. Having gated content and caps in an MMO makes sure nobody can get too far ahead too fast. But that's bad and let's be honest, it's in place just to inflate the numbers. You'll need to play less every day for longer periods of time. So if you have a lot of free time during the weekends or when you have a free day or something, you'll be left with nothing to do very easily. Now the damage output disparities between different weapon combos are pretty high. Some have good AoE, some have good single target etc. And those who don't have AoE will hate doing contracts in the open world. Killing mobs one by one <laughs> is a bit meh. Especially when you see other people pulling and clearing 10 of them at once in the time you do one. Oh joy. The servers still seem to be acting out at times. I was in a dungeon yesterday with a friend and I saw his character take damage when he shouldn't have. High levels of toxicity and elitism. I don't think elitism is particularly bad. There are a lot of people who enjoy that kind of hardcore experience. Being that PvP, PvE or a mix of both. I had my fair share of hardcore experiences in MMOs over the years. But what bothers me, these two go hand in hand, you see. When an elitist joins the matchmaking, he can be become toxic to the other people in the group. Sorry I got no footage of any of these last two points as they ran out of space and they happened in the same dungeon. But hear me out. This guy dies first every time, right? We don't. And he asks for a wipe. First time he did politely, but the second time he called us idiots for continuing and wasting time, etc. We quickly voted to kick him out of the group in the middle of the boss fight, by the way. <laughs> and we finished the dungeon. There's nothing I hate more than little teamies like this. Don't be that guy. Just don't be that guy. Please. Respect everyone. Don't be an asshole. When you join randoms, it's like signing a terms of service, you know, I acknowledge some people might not know the mechanics and you just can't call people idiots for no reason. I mean, obviously you can, but you got the point. If you want a higher chance of getting epics, you really need to join a guild. No way around it. As you can't do any of those bosses that can drop you that gear. Or you're left with the three dungeons you can do every day, so... <laughs> Have fun. Those have abysmal drop chances, by the way, for some of the stuff. There's anywhere between 2 and 12% on most good items. So if you want to fully gear up by doing dungeons, I expect you do it in a year or something, depending on how much you play. So yeah, the 3 dungeons per day limit is dumb and I hate it. And there are a few other sources of epics for solo players, but this point still stands. I mentioned this in the beginning, 5 hour <laughs> maintenance on a Saturday morning. <laughs> I sure hope it's for an emergency patch or something because otherwise it's bad. Now Throne on Liberty is an MMO that has a story somewhere for sure. MMO RPG stories are written like rings of power, you know, poorly. And yeah, with bad, badly written characters, nonsensical stuff happening, gringy voice lines. We got it all here in a nicely wrapped up package. The child who lost everything here 10 years ago now challenges the might of the Archean Legion. Starborn bravery and determination. The story is consistently inconsistent. You have the narrator who's telling you stuff. You got some sort of animatics from time to time. I like this the most, by the way. You got rendered cinematics, you got in-game cinematics, and you got dialogues that will make or break your F key by the end of the story. So take your pick. Finally awake. Can I with you? Thanks to your defeat of King Vert, we were about to be killed. That that power. I have a friend. Not much to say here besides the fact that nothing but the graphics stand out and by the end I didn't even know what was happening anymore. I didn't give a shit. Combat is kinda slow for some classes. I mean the healer. And look, I, I get it. Healer's damage shouldn't be that high, you know? Can't have it all, right? But why other classes can farm like there is no tomorrow and have some healing so they can self-sustain? It's pretty dumb if you ask me. If you gimp healers so they need a group, you should gimp everyone else to need healers, right? After 56 hours, I still have some pieces of gear I got at level 20. I like crafting in games, but my god, guys, this itemization gives me AIDS. I prefer the new world crafting and itemization in general any day. I'm not talking about the dull chest farm from new world. Just the fact that all that gear just drops from different sources, that thing alone makes the game better in my eyes. I don't know. There's a lot of confusing things in this game as is the case with any Korean MMO. It's a paradise for content creators for sure because they can just make 
10,000 guides on every little system in the game. For players, it's pretty bad. It's so easy to miss out on stuff or make some crucial mistakes that are not easy to fix, by the way. The, the game is bloated by a ton of currencies and crafting materials and all kinds of systems that take some effort to fully understand and it's just tiresome and annoying at this point. It <laughs> Yeah, and it's not like Eve Online, for example. That's a pretty hard to learn game, but in this one, things seem to be confusing for no reason. You know, that's the annoying part. Open world dungeons are free for all pieces of shit. If you have a contract in that place, you at least get credit for pitting the mob. But loot, nah, screw that. And they're constantly filled with parties that run around tagging everything. So it's all reduced to <laughs> who is tagging more shit past. I repeat, for contracts, you can go in solo and hit the mobs at least once, but you get no loot. This idea is cool because during the night time these dungeons become PvP enabled, you know, but... <laughs> So yeah, meaning you can fight in for spots like in Black Desert, but daytime, my god guys, it's it's so annoying and boring, everyone, everyone on the server is there farming shit, and it's annoying, it's not fun, it's boring, I'd rather do chest runs in New World. Queues for co-op dungeons are nearly impossible, I got only two dungeon runs at level 50 with the matchmaker, I don't put the blame on players here because I get it. Most don't want to waste their time with randoms, but I blame the devs for making these starter dungeons too hard, so you really need friends if you want to do them daily. So I got a message for tanks, because I see only tanks get so picky, you know. Guys, guys, hello. Give the matchmaking a chance, please. And also give people some credit, you know. People are really nice and learn pretty fast. Anyway, there's no solution to this. Just get into a guild of like-minded individuals and you should be fine. Uh, the last one. During the boss fights, if not always, you should really stay zoomed out to the maximum so you can see the graphical cues about some of the abilities of the boss because that's the only way you'll see what comes next, you know. And zoomed out like that, everything seems to be moving slower. I don't particularly enjoy that. I see a lot of similarities with New World when it comes to PvP, so those who enjoyed PvP in that game might find this one great. So if chasing meta builds and doing coordinated fights with your buddies, running around in a blob, pulling some of the foes from the enemy blob to melt them in a second, knock yourself out man, more power to you. This one seems less buggy and more stable than New World was at the beginning, so there's that. I even saw some people PvP around the boss in the open world at some point. I think it was a raid boss or something, I don't know. I have no clue. So the hardcore crowd can have a kick with this one and to be frank, if you're lucky, I bet you could even find relaxed guilds that do some cool content in a casual friendly manner, you know. Meaning no draconic PvP and PvE schedules and yeah, stuff like that. For me, nothing but the graphics sets this game apart from any other MMO I played. Lost Star Combat is better. The progression, if it has similarities and even some downsides with this, is still better. You can do a lot of stuff solo in that game. New World, if Amazon pulled their head out of the sand for once and fixed PvP and actually added a lot of PvE content and started releasing, I don't know, two weapons that, that's classes in that game uh, per year, it would be better, way better than this. Way better than this. That game has a soul and great core systems in my opinion, but because comes bland at the end game. Hell, I'd even rank Black Desert Online higher than this. And that game has a lot of annoying stuff. Some pay to win, lack of PV dungeons and the then failing when upgrading gear, just to name a few. So, now, I presented you all this info. Now, from a filthy casual perspective, I'd give this game a 6. I didn't have much hope anyway and to be frank, it's a bit better than I expected. But still, way too much friction with the game systems for my taste. If I was still a hardcore player, this might have been a solid 7. Still only a 7, not higher, because <laughs> of the freaking content gating. And finally, it might be 8 for you guys that don't mind any of this at all and find the pay to win auction house cool, I guess. But for casuals, I don't think the game offers much. Yeah, sure, it's free, you can give it a go and the leveling experience is pretty fast. But keep everything I said earlier in mind and yeah, I hope this helped some of you before committing too much time into the game. Now, there are still some cool games I'm waiting for in 2024. Toker 2 and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 are two of them. So if you fancy those or anything else on my channel and think access journalism is a plague, subscribe to this channel and I'll bring you more honest reviews, guides, first impressions and much more. Until next time, take care and see ya. What? what?
Why am I wearing this hoodie? Well, bro, I'm wearing this because I heard it's cool to have a blue hoodie when you're talking about RPG games, right? Oh, so only ARPGs. Sorry, bro, my bad. My bad. I'm sorry, guys. God damn it.